The target was ten yards away. I was currently residing in some pseudo-shrubbery, outfitted in impeccable office camouflage. In my head, I reviewed the operation I had planned in eternity <clears throat> about twelve minutes ago. How had it gone so wrong? The hit was supposed to be a quick in and out job, a rookie mission. That all changed when someone had tipped off my unsuspecting target. Immediately, he launched the perfect preemptive strike. A donut was hurled over two cubicles, armed with what apparently were homing sprinkles. The maple missile hit its mark, my right thigh. As a result, I was now sporting a dark sticky stain on my once immaculate khakis. My mind snapped back to the present situation. I was deep behind enemy lines, and my dockers demanded retribution. I felt the disturbance in my bowels, and knew my patience was about to be rewarded. Rewarded with a gas so foul that it cleared out the third floor men's restroom earlier that morning. A flatulence so potent, almost symbiotic in a way that it latches onto living beings in attempt to ensure its disgusting survival. These particular toxic fumes were brought into existence by last night's dinner of Wang Tai's takeout red duck curry. Although I, nor Mr. Wang, could have predicted the sheer magnitude of the weaponized methane about to be released. Carefully, I peeked out of the bush to check for bystanders. The cubicle hall was deserted. Only the murmur of forced phone conversation prevailed in the background. I felt the final pressure surge below my belt. Quickly, I ducked back into the bush, unbuckled my belt, and dropped my pants. As I felt the release coming, I sealed the opened end of the Erzuka air gun directly against my bare posterior. Immediately, the all-familiar sensation carried its course, and as this gas was actually denser than air, it remained in its kin and shape container. I caught a whiff of the fumes overflow and my eyes watered as I hastily refastened my pants. Silent, but very deadly indeed. I carefully positioned myself in the optimum vantage point in the plastic ferns and raised my air gun. Its plastic crosshairs trained directly on my completely unaware target in the cubicle across the hall. I smiled as I pulled back the trigger. Harold was having a very productive day. He had finished two proposals, chatted up the beautiful new receptionist Melanie, and even managed to hit Sean with a donut projectile flown over two cubicles. He smiled to himself about the prank. Sean looked so ridiculous scrubbing his pants with a wet napkin, which led to the poor chap's hilarious failure with Melanie short after. Harold was sure he wouldn't take it personally. After all, these pranks were an amusing way to circumvent boredom in the office, and always in good fun. Still, something in Sean's eyes was unsettling as Melanie laughed at his apparent semen stain. Something shifted Harold's wandering mind back to his cubicle. Something was off about his cubicle. Something crucial. Slowly, he realized what it was. Something smelled rotten in here. Of course, Harold had no idea the apparent ordeal he was about to experience. Instantly, the toxic plume hit him, wrapping the lethal cloud around his body. The ghastly odor forced its way into his nostrils, overriding every other smell in the room. His vision clouded and his senses felt like they were exploding. Harold spun in his chair, desperately trying to grasp what was happening. His eyes began to tear up and his tongue tasted like a jockstrap. The noxious sensory overload forced him to the ground, hacking up spittle on the carpet in an attempt to get the horrendous taste out of his mouth. Harold could only see green now as the symbiotic stench continued to assault its new host. Hauling himself up at the cubicle wall, Harold realized he inhaled too much of the wretched fumes. The office walls began to tilt and warp as the deadly gas now began to act as a hallucinogen. Stumbling out of his cubicle turned hell, he somehow managed to navigate down the hall, which in his mind had turned into a sick, perverted labyrinth. Suddenly, the urge to exercise the demon surfaced. Harold needed to puke. The nearest container was a trash can by someone's feet, and Harold snatched it away like it was the lost gold of Atlantis. Collapsing to the ground, he stuck his head in the plastic bin and spewed as if his life depended on it. Several minutes went by, and eventually Harold regained his bearings and stopped convulsing on the floor long enough to look up and out of the can. 
His eyes were greeted by two shapely legs. He followed the incredible hourglass figure all the way up and met the eyes of none other than Melanie the receptionist. Silence ensued for what felt like an eternity. Their eyes locked in confusion and disbelief. Finally, she opened her luscious lips and to Harold's horror, said the eight words no man ever wants to hear from a beautiful woman. Did you really just puke in my trash can? And this has been the Great Erzuka Tragedy of 2013. Buy one now on Amazon.